And I was thinking of singing Moon River. It's not going to happen. Look at this water. Beautiful fish. Wow. wow. There he goes up into the sky. Touchdown. <laughs> That's such a privilege. This is not a story about politics. It's about people, conservation, and a shared love of the African wilderness. Five Aussies and three Zimbabweans on an unforgettable journey, 80 kilometres by foot and 50 by canoe, through some of the planet's most breathtaking scenery. See if she's going to shoot the first person who makes the wrong move. <laughs> Well, I can honestly say that since I was a young fellow reading about Africa, I have dreamed about seeing this river at this point in Mana Pools. And all I can say is that my first impression is that it's so far beyond my expectations. It is unbelievably beautiful. Just about sunset, no one around. Hippos out there, bird life. Oh my gosh, you can scatter my ashes here happily. Of all the animals we encounter, the most remarkable is the pangolin. This is one of the uh, rarest creatures you will ever see in Africa. He is totally prehistoric. Look at those scales. This is once in a lifetime. This is absolutely, as Brad says, this is a once in a lifetime thing. Never, ever, ever, ever seen it. They, they walk, their front legs are very, very small, very short, back legs are strong. They walk with them slightly raised. And 99% of its diet is actual ants, not termites. You can see the excitement on everyone's faces. People who have worked in the bush all their lives may never have seen one of these creatures. Now we'll walk all along this southern side. You see all these trees here, it's, it's very pretty. And you might get some game, but you'll be coming down to drink from the pool. There is no better time in Africa, I don't think. Pre-dawn, a little chill in the air, coffee in the belly, and a nice breakfast of porridge, the local stuff, which is the good stuff. Every day brought new vistas and new surprises, some big and some small. That's an alarm call from a squirrel. Very loud too. There could be a snake on the ground, it could be anything. Hello, hello. Sidney, what are the dangers of walking into this sort of uh, thick, thick, thick grass? It's called adrenaline grass. <laughs> <laughs> if you get in there, you can have a buffalo or can have a, uh, a lion. This is scary. And this is exciting. This is what minor pools, this area, is all about. These big bulls. So we're going to go downwind. Downwind of the big boy. Like we went ahead and it approached us and that was quite exciting. This is why you come to Africa. This is why I do. This is why I love it. He has very poor eyesight, but his, his sense of smell is acute. We stay with him for an hour, and then he treats us to something magical. An encounter so close, we can almost touch him. What's the best for me is to, to see the guest excited about anything. Then, for me, it's like also it's the first time I've seen it. You know, every time they get excited, I get more excited. <laughs> <laughs> A great grey giant who could trample us all allows us some of the most intimate moments. To see an elephant's eyelashes from this close is something we will always cherish. So here we are trying to get our canoe trip started. We've got two big male hippos fighting out here. And now Gil has just spotted wild dogs, my favourite predator in all of Africa. And we can't even get underway. This is amazing just amazing so there's the impala they've spotted the dogs here they go into hunting mode and now they're away now this chase if it goes could be on for a while they are just going to run these guys 
into the ground. All the alarm calls off Boom. and racing. Still chasing. That story had a mystery ending. We had a briefing to attend. Okay, we paid hazard uh, hippos. We must give hippos maximum respect. As long as those guys stay at a safe distance, we're all happy. You don't want to be too close to them. Tendai's words about hippos were prophetic. Not two kilometres into the paddle, an almighty crash and splash behind us. Linda's dad Gil and guide Andy were in the Zambezi, an angry hippo still metres away. There was an urgent call to action for the group. He, he actually knocked you in. All I heard, I heard the bang, and as I turned, Andy was going up in the air. As protocol demanded, we locked our canoes around the stricken Andy and Gill, all the while being watched into shore. Gill, anything you want to say to Shirley about the pub or about <laughs> Linda's inheritance? Someone else in disguise. <laughs> I tell you. The, the mandible, the tusks came up. Can you believe it? <laughs> no, it's just nervous laughter. Yeah. <laughs> I've been coming for six years and this is my first time, eh? Everything drying off. Half an hour later, Gil and Andy were bravely ready to go again. This headwind is um, making it a little difficult, but hopefully throughout the afternoon, wind will drop off a little bit and make paddling a little bit more uh, benign. No more freaking hippos. Of course, on the Zambezi, with so many thousands of hippos, that was wishful thinking. A lot of hippos out of the water here. Some hippos in the water just to the left. And Tendai says there's a channel just to the right. They've all seen us just now. A channel just to the right that we take. Shallow here. Let's stick with the shallow. The display that that guy did, there were a couple of them. Open mouth. Get out of my territory. And we? Happily obliged. There's just this one shot that I've been so wanting to get, and that's of an elephant down by the river. Now, in September and October, during the dry season, the end of the dry season, they are down here all the time. We haven't seen many because there's still plenty of water in the back country, but we've seen this big guy up here from a distance while we were getting set up for fishing, and Tendai has kindly jumped in the canoe, we got to paddle back upstream, but I think this is going to be worth it. Some beautiful light, but this is one of the shots on the Zambezi that you so want to get as a photographer. We slid in behind him as quietly as we could, the canoe gliding to a halt on the sandbank. He was then quick to give us, well, an elephant-sized welcome. I'm here and I'm much, much bigger than you. or hunt them or shoot them, I have no idea. I enjoy elephants, I enjoy studying them, and I enjoy getting closer to them, because they are very gentle, they have a very good sense of uh, memory. I love elephants. This is a Legavan or a water monitor, big one. Never smile at a Nile crocodile. He's not coming up somewhere there. There's 
the bow waves. It's like looking at a shark. These bow waves coming towards us. And they are a couple of big boys, those two. Checking out the view. Richie, what sort of form is the team in today, do you think? There's a bit of a fitness cloud hanging over the team after a particularly long day in the sun. Trains two hippos <laughs> per <laughs> 10 metres, not a good average when it comes to the law of averages. But other than that, it's a st typical stinking hot day here on the Zambezi River. <laughs> Sun's already set, but we're about to pull into camp and what another day on the Zambezi River. Our sleep is interspersed by the mocking honking of hippos and as the sun rises, our camp is blessed by a visit from another Manapool's giant. It's a slightly less welcome giant that delays our departure. Day two begins. Hopefully today, smooth sailing. Getting shallow on that side? Yeah, we're going to come There's something ahead that does concern me. Tendai calls it Hippo City. Ah, no need to worry. Everything will be taken care of by the guides. Straight away into another roadblock. But the mood has changed a little bit now with these water policemen. Man, that sea of backs up there is is about 40 hippos okay so one's leaving the water we are hoping that he will whistle the others to follow Tendai was now thinking on his feet literally there they are. there's one way of getting around hippos this is eventful gone again and done some walking. Simon acting like Catherine Hepburn in the African Queen. When in doubt, you've got to improvise. Okay. Are we all ready? Now that's those eight dealt with. We've only got about another 90 just around the next corner. Here we go. Just when you think it's safe to go back in the water, there's maybe, I guess, 20 or 30 up there. Just want to Some fast paddling right here. Open, yeah. That is a wall of hippos. We're in shallow, far out. We're right in shallow water. That is a lot of hippos. Gil quite happy to be coming well wide of them. So Tendai says that that was Hippo City, the famous Hippo City yeah. of Zimbabwe. Humans, 399 specials going daily we made it through that was an adrenaline ride that was Ugh. yeah come on bring it on what is wrong with you for all the heart-stopping moments not one of us wanted to leave it was an adventure like no other we pinned our ears back we flexed our muscles and we showed determination When you're in the bush like this, you are alive, aren't you? you know? Because you are, you are away from any building, away from anybody. It's just you and your guest in the wildlife. Yeah. Nothing better is there. Oh, this is nothing better than nothing that. Nothing better in life, yeah. <laughs> My main message is to, to say, come to Zimbabwe. And, and it's not that you, by coming to Zimbabwe, you, you, you're supporting politicians but it's actually you're supporting people in Zimbabwe. Your money is not just for you spending your holiday, but it, it helps us, it helps the villagers, it helps the animals. Mm -hmm.